To me, putting is keep it simple, stupid. You've got to repeat that stroke. In my era, we called it rock and roll. You rock your shoulders down and down. You want to go from black to white. Distance is everything. In other words, I don't care what line you have the putt on. If you don't have the right speed, you're not going to make this thing. Welcome to Best Lessons Ever. I'm your host, Michael Breed. Who do you consider the greatest putter of all time? Is it Jack Nicklaus? Maybe Ben Crenshaw? My vote, Bobby Locke. Well, we've got lessons on all these Hall of Famers and so many more. Let's start things off with key fundamentals of the putting stroke from the man that's earned the nickname, the boss of the moss. I would be kind of what you'd call a square to square guy. Uh, there are several different ways to do it, but I think you need to find out what fits your personality and what works for you. And I want to keep the putter blade square to the line as long as I can. I don't want to have a lot of rotation. And I make sure that when I grip the putter, I take the position of my left hand and I rotate it here so that my left wrist is up in this high position so that the natural hinging of my left hand actually keeps the putter blade going back and square to the line, okay, so that I can take rotation out of the putter. That just was, was what works for me. And I like to make sure that I want this putter in that position, staying as square to the line as I can, and I want to take rotation out, and I want this putter shaft to swing properly. So yeah. you think by having that left hand position where it's at, nice putt, by the way, right in the jar. It begins with grip pressure. It does, and I think, and, and, and I speak for, speak for all pros here, most of us, most of us would grip the club a lot lighter than most amateurs do. All amateurs do, ladies exempt, really. Most male amateurs grip the club far, far too tight. And you see the, uh, uh, the muscles here, and you think, oh, no, 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 this isn't gonna happen. And what that, what that does is that takes away the weight of the head of the putter, the feel. And putting to me is all feel. Uh, so if I can, if I can relax the hands on the putter grip, almost think of it like a bird in your hands, and we don't want to squeeze. Mm -hmm. So just that, and that allows the putter to swing back in a very, very relaxed and an easy way. If I was tense, it gets short and it get ooh horrible. So that's number one for me is the grip pressure. What I did for thousands of hours uh, as a kid and all through my career was good old, you know, mechanical work, so just to build the goal swing, build that repetition. And, and the chalk line has, has stood the test of time. You simply put down a chalk line, dead straight, find a flat spot on the, on, on the green, and then start to work on it, and you start to get some feedback of what you're, what you're looking for. And now I believed, you know, I was trying to create kind of the pendulum stroke on the backswing, so I'm this side of the line, so naturally the, the club will come back a fraction inside. And I always seemed to, I loved having a, a single white line on the back of my putter, so I used to put that line on the chalk line down there, and just you can just rehearse without a ball, so you can make an action, and you, and the important thing is, you know, where, where where is your fulcrum to your stroke? You know, where does it come from? You know, it, and it, that's your choice. You can you can say, hey, I, I love moving my left shoulder first. That brings it in, or maybe I use my right shoulder, or maybe I use my belly to turn first again. That's your choice. So you find some things. You set yourself up, you know, parallel. Get the weight forward, but you, but once the body settles in a good position, that's really it. It's basically you're just working this, and and you were, and in my era, we called it rock and roll. You rocked your shoulders down and down. So it's down with the left, down with the right. So they were rocking. They were tipping that way. I didn't, I didn't like this turning because that felt like it was you know shut to me and then to open. So you're trying to rock your shoulders so they stay, basically you are square. To that line, they're matching that line. Get me that's the kind of that motion. I try to get in as uh, square as I can. Uh, I try to get my feet just right up under me and balance with my eyes just inside the balls where I want to be. I think the biggest sin you want to do or don't want to do is have your eyes past the ball. It's really hard to have your eyes over the ball, past the ball, and look back and see your line. You're, it just doesn't work. Optically, it doesn't work that way. Your eyes are here, and you're kind of 
looking this way and it just doesn't work. When you back back out, you're looking and your eyes stay on the line. And that's where you look back and I can almost see the line on this particular putt right now, which is really good when you can see that. Yeah. If I was teaching somebody, first of all, I'd get them to get a nice wide stance. That gives stability here. Then I'd like to see them put both hands facing each other. Now, I like to go left hand below hold right, and I would teach somebody this purely because it brings the left shoulder forward. So if anything, you're going to get a slightly inside stroke. Sometimes if the left hand is high, your shoulders get open and it could cause you to cut across it, which isn't great for getting the ball to spin down into the hole. Okay, so slightly wide stance, ball position, always about an inch, inch and a half ahead of your sternum to the left hand side. This encourages underneath your sternum will be the lowest point of the stroke. After that, the putter's rising a bit. Again, helping to give a little bit of top spin on the ball. And here's one change I make I think compared to a lot of players, I like to teach to watch the ball. Now in modern teaching, or for years people would say, keep your head still, keep your head still. I actually teach, and I think this is a great thing if you can, it can become a habit, watch the ball with your eyes. That means your head won't move. So as that ball is traveling out the first couple of feet, my eyes are tracking it. No need to move my head, I can see it. It tracks it for four or five feet with my eyes, and then my head will move up. If I can make that a discipline, there'll be less chance that I'll move anxiously to see where it's going because it is absolutely natural for any human being to watch the ball as it's going to the target. That's normal. So why not teach yourself to do it properly rather than spend your whole life, which a lot of guys like me, trying not to look up or we're trying to stay nice and still. It works, but it's not natural. My dad taught me he taught that the putting stroke was your direction hand, the left hand, okay? And consequently, he didn't want it going like this, nor did he want it opening and closing. I mean, he always taught me to keep the, the grip vertical going through. Putter stays low, the grip stays, stays through. The most mistakes you'll see most people do that have, let's say, just a normal, like they grip it, maybe interlock it or something, they generally, I'm watching where this grip points. And when they finish, I want this grip to still stay vertical. Can I just stop you in mid-flow sure. there? Sorry Absolutely. to do it. But I know for the viewers at home, and I know we all want to help them, Dad had a wonderful drill for you. Gail Stockton yeah. used to hold. Did he not hold a, the grip of a putter? How right far there. outside your left hand would that He be? would put it out about four inches. And, and, and then the, basically... And the purpose of this drill? Well, when I putted, my left hand stayed down. I'd hit it at the exact same spot. Right. I mean, most people, if you put it out four inches, move it a little bit closer, okay, they would end up hitting it, if at all, they'd hit it with their right hand. Right. So in other words, they flip it. And I was taught, I got to the point that I literally, my left hand would go, this is the part I'm trying to put in the hole right here. Right. I was taught that if that goes to the hole, doesn't twitch, doesn't flip back, if it just goes to the hole, the putter's gonna follow and there goes the ball. Stockton's putting tips have helped Rory, Phil, Annika, me, and I know they'll help you too. Up next, we'll reveal how to practice for that must-make putt, including a drill used by 14-time major champion Tiger Woods. There's only one brand in all of... of the putter face. If you hit the ball right off the middle of the putter, you're going to have better speed. Something to practice and help you with a little drill. As you can see, I put two tees down here, and I have a little bit of space between the putter as you're beginning, but it just gives you an idea of how to keep the putter going back and through and hitting the middle of the face. As you get better, you'll learn to adjust a little bit, and you'll be able to move the tees closer together to where basically you almost have the width of your actual putter head. And once you're, you got it like that, it's so much easier to go ahead and hit the putter and using the ball right in the middle of that putter face. Hitting the middle of the face of your putter, you're gonna make more putts. Your speed's gonna improve and you're gonna make more putts. I love that drill. Not only do you see Mark's good buddy Tiger Woods constantly putting between two tees, but it's a great way to practice indoors. All you gotta do is just switch out those tees for maybe a couple of books or two sleeves of golf balls. Now I'm gonna go work on this drill some more while you learn from Jason Day. Two things 
that uh, a lot of amateurs get wrong is that when they're reading a part or thinking about a part, there's only really two things that you should think about. Speed first, how fast you really need to hit the part, and then the line, because you could pick the line first and then hit that putt and hit your line, but at a different speed, you're gonna miss the putt either high or low if you hit it too hard or hit, hit it too, too uh, soft. But if you say, I really, you know, uphill, I'm gonna hit at least a foot to a foot and a half past the hole, then you can go, okay, I'm gonna hit it that hard. Then you can pick your line with that matches that speed. One that I've always worked on when I've putted short putts is when I have a putt this length here, I, the last thing I look at is I want the ball to hit the back of the cup right here. I don't want the ball just to die in here. If it dies in here, that means I'm not hitting the ball squarely. So I'm just trying to die it in the front edge. So I'm always looking at a spot somewhere on the back of the cup, either the top of the cup or somewhere on the grass right here. The other thing that's really crucial on these putts here is making sure the top of your grip keeps going through to the hole. If your top of your grip stops like this, the putter now is either gonna go left or push it out to the right. So when you're on a little short putt, a great way to practice a little drill is stand here like this and everything together, push it to the hole. Get another ball. No backstroke, just no push back it to stroke, the hole. Just push it to the hole. Now, you want to sort of feel, feel that extension to the hole. That, what that's teaching you is I'm pushing with the top of my grip. I'm not pushing any other way other than the top. Now, as you slowly work your way back, same drill, same setup, same grip pressure. That's a great push drill. Push it to the hole. I see a lot of amateur golfers that when they set up to it, they've been told to accelerate their putter. And what they do is they take the putter back low and slow and they have a long follow through where they break their wrists. What's the mistake is they have a very fast transition. Greg Norman paid me a great compliment a few years ago when he said I had the best transition he'd ever seen. So transition meaning the change from backswing to forward swing. So in order to get rid of this long follow through, I've placed a couple tees right here, right in front of the ball so that you can't follow through. So you have to hit, hit the ball and have the energy right at the ball. I kind of call this the Gary Player drill because he kind of had that pop sort of stroke. But without a long follow through, I can still hit a really nice putt. Two tees. Who knew that's all it took to putt like Tiger Woods and Brad Faxon? We've got plenty more of the best lessons ever on the way, including Justin Leonard's secret to making long putts. But first, a classic tip from his 1999 Ryder Cup captain, Ben Crenshaw. Number one, you have to have a concept of what the ball is going to do, number one. But number two is the speed of the putt. You know, I, I would first of all think of pace and then think of line. Uh, some, some people are, are the, just the opposite. I think you'll always see a good putter grab the club pretty lightly. You don't see good putters grab it real tight. The, the looser you hold it, the, the nicer the club head will swing, just like a golf shot. But you don't see a good putter rushing the hole or leaving it way short. But one thing too is, is to, to be yourself when you putt. Harvey Pinnock, my old teacher, said, you gotta get comfortable over that ball, no matter what it looks like. If you're an avid golfer, you eat, breathe, and sleep golf, but maybe you don't have enough time to play as much as you want. With SkyTrack, you can spend that rainy Saturday taking on some of the most legendary courses in the world while providing hours of fun and enjoyment for your entire family. It's easy to use, accurate, and truly affordable. SkyTrack is the first device of its kind. More than just a golf simulator, more than just a launch monitor, it's the best of both. Special financing programs are now available for SkyTrack. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Thursday Night Football, Cowboys, Vikings, on NBC and NFL Network. Junior golfers enjoy the game. Eight teams head to Arizona to compete, with fans from all over cheering everyone on. PGA Junior League. 
the PGA Junior League Golf National Championship. I told the press if I had to choose between my putter and my wife, I'd miss her. Well, I went, and this is an old story, but a lot of people haven't heard it. I went to the next tournament. I went into the room looking for my wife, and there was my putter on the bed with a negligee wrapped around it. <laughs> and she said, you've chosen your, 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 your new mate, and may you hit it long and straight. But baby, I won't be waiting at the gate, so don't compare your putter with your wife. Lets you stand out from the herd. What's inside sets you apart. The Cadillac Escalade. Enjoy our best offers of the year. This is how we get you closer. With three new wedge grinds shaped to fit your attack angle. Helping you get out of tough flies more easily. Introducing the all-new, totally redesigned RTX 3 Wedge from Cleveland Golf. Get closer. Nothing says treat yourself like Red Lobster's holiday seafood celebration. So try new dishes like the Grand Seafood Feast and Wild Caught Lobster and Shrimp Trio with a lobster mac and cheese topped lobster tail. Come treat yourself to feast fit for the season before it ends. Tired of giving the same old gifts year after year? Why not stand out with a one-of-a-kind present? A Golf Now gift card. Give the gift of golf good toward any hot deals tea time at thousands of great courses. Golfers choose where and when they want to play. It's never been easier to give a round of golf. Buy one for every golfer on your list. Visit golfnow.com slash gift card today. I'm a big believer in fate. I have a good feeling about this. That's all I'm going to tell you. Never get tired of watching that. One of the greatest putts of all time. What you don't know is that Ben Crenshaw was planting the seeds and preparing Justin for his magical moment long before the Ryder Cup. Years ago at Colonial, I was talking to him about putting and and asked him, you know, he was hitting these, you know, 30 footers. I said, what are you what are you looking for here? He says, he looks for the ball to fall in the hole drunk. Meaning like it's, it's that just, person's last step. It's the last step, and then it just trickles in. Um, so it's all about getting the right pace. He also talked about choosing the highest line possible so that he always wants that ball above the hole, and at that last roll is the one that gets it into it. So um, while, you know, I don't think any of us are really truly trying to make a lot of these long putts, but the better pace you have, the better you read the putt, the more of these you're going to make, and certainly the more you're going to two-putt. The key to great putting is the ability to get your body off the line and your putter head on the line you want to start the ball. So I would draw a line on the grass here. This putt breaks a little right to left, so I'll, I'll draw this line. I'm not very good at it, but that's the line. And I carry the line way beyond my feet. Now I on got the break. This on the break, and I, I got this from Steve Elkington, who I, who got it from uh, Jackie Burke, one of the all-time great, great putters. Great. And yes. Elk will probably be mad that I'm sharing this because it's one of the, you know there's some secrets that we have we just don't tell anybody about. But you want to go from black to white, and the key is to be able to cross over to get your body off the line and get your putter head on the intended line. Everything to the right of the line is That's black. Right. Everything and, to the left well, is I white. Why do you want to go black to white? Exactly, and most. Uh, golfers are better on right to left putts than they are on left to right putts. And the reason is, I'm straight behind the ball lining up this putt. If I draw this right to left break, that line is to my left. So I'm in the black. You want to go black to white. I'm already in the black, so it's easy. But on a left to right putt, it's a whole nother animal. And most right handed players are poor putters on left to right putts. And I'll show you why. Here's the line. And it just goes off into infinity back here, gotcha. Randall. And the key is to be able to, if I'm directly behind the ball here, now that line is to my right. That's the black. I'm standing in the white. Well, we want to go black to white. So what I'll do is I'll cross over into the black 
And when I walk in, I cross back into the white. That gets my body off the line and my putter head on the line. And now I just putt it like I'm trying to hit something above ground. Very seldom do I see people come out an hour before and loosen up. And above all, this is where they should spend their time if they want to improve this improve but, their score. But you've got a sand iron. Sand iron. Now, what I'm going to do now to that hole 35 foot away, I'm going to putt with the sand iron, but you have to hit it in the equator right there. If you hit it underneath, it's only going to go here. If you flip it early, it's not going to go. So what this is teaching you to do is to hit the equator and to have good timing and not to break your left wrist down. In other words, that left wrist is going to do that. If you do that, you've had it. So, okay, there's the hole up there. Watch this. Here we go. See, I hit that right in the equator, right in line. I just had to hit it. See that? So that would, that would be a very good drill for, for most people. For timing. For timing and stopping you breaking down. We're not done with the Black Knight just yet. Up next, three legends of the game with 33 combined majors come together for one unforgettable lesson. I was putting so bad one time at, 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 at the Bob Pope Classic that I said, I'm going to putt like Jack this week. I got my 8802. I can, I'm, I can mimic it. He turns his shoulder. He gets his shoulders parallel to the line, even though his hips are 45 degree angle left. And he gets in here and he turns this way. You got to stretch your neck. Yeah, and he stands in here and he stands in here and he stands in here and then he goes like this. And I shot 16 under, lost by one shot to Mahaffey, and I didn't use it again. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> In Golf My Way, you talked about how important you felt it was to, to, to use the right hand to feel the face of the putter. Uh, my question is, could you talk to us about the role of the left hand there also? Well, I think there's a combination role, Martin. Uh, the right hand, to me, is more used on slow greens or on longer putts. The left hand controls the pace of the, of the stroke. In other words, if I'm, a, if I'm making a stroke, I don't want this kind of a thing. I want to make sure that my left hand is developing a nice, even pace. Good to see my friend Martin Hall hasn't aged a day. As for Jack, that's just a small taste of how he became golf's greatest champion. The Golden Bear was recently joined by Gary Blair and Lee Trevino, who opened up about the biggest putts of their career. Rarely will you find a more memorable lesson. Generally speaking, I always looked at what were my deficiencies. My deficiency was always looking up, mm -hmm. moving my head. That's right. Okay. And when I moved my head, then I then I then I lifted up and and I opened up the putter blade and usually hit it out to the right. So my co my concentration is to make sure that I keep my head still, and then make sure that I do exactly what I do, not hinge it. Make sure that I carry the through the stroke through and hit the ball. Make sure that I hit the ball where I line it up on my putter. And that's a pretty common thing to try to do. It's different strokes for different folks. For everything you tell me in golf, I'll give you a contradiction. Okay. Bobby, no, nah, but Bobby Locke said to me as a young man, he said, if you got the right speed, you got four to one. So if you hit it hard, That's right. now if you hit it soft, okay. it can come in here, 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 and here. You got four to one. Four to one are big odds. So the last thing I'm thinking of, and I had to hold that putter to win Augusta, and make sure I got the right speed, so I got the odds in my favor. Stuff there. Like, Distance is everything. In other words, I don't care what line you have the yeah. putt on. If you don't have the right speed, you're not going to make this thing. I putted when I needed to make a putt. You'd see me. I'd put my ball on the toe of the putter, yes. and then I would go to the center, and that made me. That gave. I didn't have to be perfect with the stroke because I was going out on it. Crenshaw putts like that, but Crenshaw is a stopper. He actually putts a lot like Gary. He takes the club way back starts the ball on the toe and then kind of traps it but he doesn't follow through that far but distance is everything i don't care what you read in a putt if you don't have the right distance you don't have a shot to make it in conclusion i can see them we, in their living room we all know a hell of a lot about nothing hey. <laughs> guys this is great i can see them in their living room now they got the broom over here there <laughs> the, last, the last piece of the equation is you've got to believe you're going to make it if you, if you don't believe you're going to make it, you're never going to make it. If you believe you're going to make it, you've got a shot. 
It simply doesn't get any better than that. Some of the best putters in the game covered the fundamentals so that you can follow Jack's advice, be confident, and make it when it matters.